Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're wrapping up the part three of our budget $300 four wheel disc brake swap. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. I'm Sean. So today we're going to wrap up part three of our three-part under $300 four-wheel disc brake swap. Before we get going, make sure you click on that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when any new videos come out. So just as a recap, in part one, we did the rear brakes off of a 95 Mustang GT, got our adapters made and got those mounted. Part two, let us see the front brakes from a 2002 Mustang GT and get those adapted to the original 65 spindles. Today in part three, we're going to show you the new master cylinder that we're gonna use, run all the brake lines, put all new hoses in place, get the brakes bled, and hopefully we'll have a, a, a functioning brake system by the end of the day. Let's get started. All right, so we've got our master cylinder here and we're gonna use a brake uh, proportioning valve and don't get mad, it's off a of GM, but it's kind of just a universal brake proportioning valve. And so we've got our two inlets, these are the two outlets for the front, and this is the one outlet for the rear. And most of the time on a GM cars, they're mounted kind of like this, um, but I think for space purposes, I'm going to try and mount it like that, where it's underneath the master cylinder, and I think that'll make making the lines pretty easy. Um, so we just need to make a bracket to mount this to the bolt holes here of the master cylinder. So I've got my bracket made up and just hit it with some paint real quick. So next up is to mount the uh, proportioning valve on here. Then we're going to mount it on here, make our lines for this, and then we can mount this whole assembly into the car and then start getting the brake lines run to the prop valve. All right, so got our fitting on. We're gonna put this in our double flaring tool. Now, the double flare is a little different because the first step is it's gonna crimp it down and then you're gonna use the flare tool to push it in. So it's actually double wall thickness um, right at the flare. And the way that you do this is you keep this out and you extend the pipe out of here at the thickness of your little double flaring button. Okay, this goes down inside and then we're going to put this on and we're going to tighten it down. And what that's going to do is just kind of round the edge just a little bit. Alright, now that that first step is done, we'll take the flare tool, put it back on, and then that's going to create the actual angle to seal this thing.
the moment of truth. Doesn't fit. Okay. The answer is it seems to. So let's make the other one that goes from here to here. And then we can mount this onto the car and start working on the front and the rear brake lines. Okay, last one's made before we can mount this thing. Let's get this mounted in place. Now, you sharp-eyed viewers may notice that I've modified the bracket just a little bit. It may be hard to tell, but it's about a half inch shorter, and I just took out some more on the back side here on the bottom just to give me a little bit better access for the rear brake line. Well, now that we've got the master cylinder mounted, the real fun begins because now we've got to run all of those brake lines and they've got to fit in that tight little area. All right, so now that we've got the master cylinder mounted, the next step is to run the lines out to the hoses. But for some reason on this car, somebody had hacked off the little tabs where the, um, the hoses like affixed to the body. So we need to make a couple of tabs. Um, right here is where those tabs mount. Since I don't have the ability to like swage a, a hex on it, we're just gonna drill a hole and it looks like it's seven, 40 roughly 745 between points so if I drill a three quarter inch hole then that should sit down in there and the next thing is how thick can that metal be the maximum thickness is about 140 well I've got some plate here that's 115 so just like eighth inch and this will be plenty strong to make some tabs so we're just going to cut this into to little strips Drill a three quarter inch hole in it, bend an L in it, and mount these to the body of the car. Got my uh, brackets made here, and you can see this is just going to go in just like that. And then a little clip will go right there, and we'll just screw this to the uh, the body, and then get started on running the brake lines.
All right, you got the lines run there on the passenger side. So we just have one more to run. And for the driver's side, since it's such a, a tight bend, I'm going to go ahead and use this copper nickel line just because it, it's a little softer and it bends easier. Um, only because it's just a hard bend there. All right, guys, moment of truth. Fluid's about to go in. All right, fluid's in it. Brakes are bled. And the real question is, does it work? And we've got a pedal. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to really tell until next time because that's when we're hoping to take our 1965 Mustang on its first test drive in I don't know how many years. But the real question is, were we able to stay under $300? Previously, we tallied up $184.36. We picked up the Power Brake Booster and Master Cylinder off eBay for $36. Next up, we picked up some 316 steel brake line on Amazon for $13.98. And then I picked up some copper nickel brake line from my local Advance Auto Parts for $11.98. All new rubber hoses at each corner from Rock Auto totaled $49.08. Brings us to a grand total of $295.40. We just made it under $300. We do need a few parts before we can get going. I still need to put a clutch in it. Um, I need a drive shaft and some clutch linkage. But for the most part, it is ready to go. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh,